hey what's up guys so welcome back to today's video today we are going to make some kind of a cooking master cooking fever kind of tutorial uh, this will be inside of unity and in today's first episode we are just going to set up the basics of the game and in the next one we are going to add customers and the other features so for now as you can see i've got a basic background uh, setup we've got a table which is kind of basic and flat as well as some stoves here and then the plates all right we've got two food but for this tutorial only the eggs one work uh, this is because i don't actually have the sprites for the bread just yet but we'll get these in later episodes and then i've added in another block uh, that we can use for other features later on in the episode so now what happens is you can actually place eggs and they will cook through as you can see now you can place one two and three and they will also overcook as you can see now it's overcooked and if all the plates are filled then you cannot actually um, place any more eggs or food on the actual plates so let's take a look at how i made this and in the next episode we'll look at polishing this to make it a little bit better as well as adding the breads next to the plates and having customers order the food so the actual UI is quite simple, uh, I'm using a 2D game object for it. So we've got the desk, which is essentially what holds everything, as well as a 2D background. This is the only thing I have as a backdrop. Uh, you can also just replace it with whatever you want, for instance. And as for the desk, we've got the pans, and then we've got the plates, All right? And if we expand the plan, pans, we've got individual pans, which are the white dots. I've got it into a prefab, which makes it easier for us to just change everything at once. And inside of one pan, we've got the sprite, a circle collider 2D, which takes the shape and size of the pan, a pan manager script, as well as an on object clicked script. Uh, this one just basically allows us to click on any 2D objects given that there is a 2D uh, collider on it and then we can just carry out actions based on this and this is everything for the pants and it's the same setup for the plates here we've got the plate manager whereas here we've got the pants manager and then again we've got the same food uh, the same plate rather and same setup so the sprite render the circle collider and here is a food holder and this references to the actual sprite in it as you can see we've got a sprite inside of it so this will change to take the sprite of our food here as well we've got another sprite which is a loaf of bread but as you can see uh, earlier on it changes to the egg when needed and once that these two are done we've got our eggs and our bread uh, let's look at the eggs because i did not implement the bread yet so as for the eggs, we've got an on object click script again. Uh, this one takes uh, the pants manager that place food. So whenever we click on this, we are calling a method inside of this script. We'll look at it later on. And then here is the box collider, which takes an overall shape and size of the eggs, as well as a food script, which allows us to define the actual food that we have and inside of it oh, we'll look at the variables in a bit that is so yeah that's about it for the actual scene setup and scripts so now let's take a look at the scripts scripting side of things so here is the holder manager so this is the template for all the holders that we have here what it does is it uh, contains a list of all the pants or rather food holders we'll take a look at what it is next as you can see here it's a food holder and then we've got virtual voids that we can um, extend from an override as needed one is a place food which takes in a food object and another one is a another place food but this one has a food object instead of a food basically it's the same thing it's just that for the food one as we'll see in a few the food one allows us to just put it on a game object and then modify the actual food object object so that's why as you can see here we can access the food object of a food uh, using food.food 
and for the actual place food it's quite simple we just loop through all the pants that are that are available and uh, we take a look if we can actually place it if we can place it then we'll be receiving an index so as long as the index is greater or equal to zero we can just uh, assume that it was placed so we just stop right there and here's if another void called can place this basically does the same thing however it just calls the can place food instead of place food and this returns true if we could place a food in this particular spot and then here is a place manager that just extends from the holder manager and nothing else we'll definitely modify this in later episodes so don't worry if it's blank here is pants manager again overrides a holder manager but this time instead of food manager we have a pan manager this is because the pan manager allows for the cooking logic while the food holder only allows you to place the food there however pan manager inherits from food object here again we've got a variable for the plates manager this allows us to reference to the previous script that we had so once we click on one food item when it's cooked it just automatically puts it in the next available plate that is available and here we have a remove food method which takes an index so this allows us to remove one food from being cooked and it just gets the pan manager at this index checks whether or not we can place it if we cannot place it we just stop right there and if we can place it then we just get the food from the pan we call pan.remove at index 0 because a pan can only have one food so it's always going to be at index 0 and then we just do plate that place food and then we just pass in the food food object and this is the on object clicked script as you can see it's very simple very straightforward we just call the unity event on click whenever we detect an on mouse up on a 2d object and this is the actual holder script that we discussed earlier uh, this contains the sprite renderer as well as a flag called isset so whenever we are actually setting an object uh, we will take the sprite uh, override the sprite itself put isset to true and then just enable the actual sprite renderer and we just uh, negate all of these on unset so moving on to the actual food holder so this one is the actual script that allows us to place a food on any object we have the list of holders called food holders these are the actual sprite renders where we can actually place the food on as well as a list of food object called current foods this allows us to keep track of which food or what food items is on the plate or the holder currently and here we've got several virtual voids uh, methods sorry so the first one is a place food method this allows us to place a food object inside of one available slot so we start off with index i is equal to minus one and then we just increment continuously and if the current holder is set so if the flag is set to true then we just continue and if the flag was false this means this spot is available then we just call holder.set and then just add the food that gets sprite and then add this to current foods and return the index at which we place the food and if nothing happened so if every spot was filled we return minus one and can place food is, a, is basically the same thing however this time we just return true or false and void remove well we just take an index and checks whether or not it was set so if this spot was empty then we just return false because we removed nothing in the contrary if there was something then we just call unset and then we just remove it from the list that we had and this is the pan manager as you can see we extend from food holder but this time what we have is a curry called call you can have it as any name you want but eventually essentially what it does it it allows us to cook the food so we start off with food that cook state we put it as cooking we wait for the cooking duration and here we do food placeholders at this index we set it to food that cooked and just update the cook state and then we wait for the overcooking duration and then we just put the spread as overcooked 
and state as overcooked and on vote remove here what we do is we just stop the quality so this will allow us to just pause what the state of the food and the actual place food one is pretty similar we just add this line here so if index not equal to minus one then we start the quality cook food using this food and index and what remove is basically the same we just stop the quality and yeah so that's about it and if you guys enjoyed today's video then please be sure to leave a like subscribe if you not already and before we continue guys um, if you have any suggestions or comments that you want to add then feel free to leave them in the comments section down below also i definitely upload this tutorial on my h.io page or somewhere uh, on the internet uh, but uh, i'll do that in a couple of few more episodes because this is very very good so it would make more sense to have it once we have some features already built and apart from that yeah uh, i hope this was uh, helpful to you guys and yeah so thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys next one bye